Once again, yeah. once again, confusing uh, reality and fantasy, which I'm sure a lot of people probably do. Yeah. In your case, do you have people walking up to you all the time? I have a lot Sorry. of people uh, walking up to me, offering me little sanitary wipes. <laughs> that is thinking, not I've funny anymore. So. That was. <laughs> I was funny the first 5,000 times. And... So, of course, I have, I have now lined this with, with sanitary. That's funny. Yeah. Oh, good. Thanks, thanks for getting me off yeah, the hook. Thank you. Um, does it frighten you at all to have an audience of people who know all the words to the theme song? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just checking. Uh, this is uh, one of my favorite shows, uh, truly, that's on TV now and, and probably in the last 10, 12 years as a critic. Uh, it's, just, it's just, here you are in season seven, still making stuff that, that's terrific writing, uh, great acting. Um, you know, it, it's un unfortunate that it's going to have to go off, but I guess 115, 120 episodes is, isn't too bad in this day and age. But uh, is, is this... Uh, I mean, did you feel that this is the right time to take it off, uh, David or Randy? Is this? Uh... Wait a minute, we're, we're going off? <laughs> <laughs> or is it never the right time to go off? Um, I think it. Uh, you know, we're all pretty comfortable with with the decision. You know, I mean, we wanted another year, and uh, you know, the network was. Uh, you know, debated because the show gets expensive when it's, you know, been on the air that long. And uh, we just want another year so we could go out right. So we're, I think we're all very sanguine with the decision. So by going out right, does that mean that Adrian is, is going to suddenly be cured of his, of his obsessive compulsive bills? Or, uh... Well, we don't have any of the writers <laughs> here on the panel, but... Um, um, doesn't, doesn't Andy kind of write all of them? Yeah, basically. My, my guess is that uh, we are gonna, um, the writers are going to wrap up the, the, the Trudy story <clears throat> and um, that, that Monk will, will you know, figure out who, killed mur uh, who, who murdered Trudy and why. And hopefully we'll have a, you know, we'll, he'll be reinstated to the police force. Those are his two main objectives, you know. Whether he gets 100 percent, you know, better, we, we, we don't know. Um, Speaking if, of someone who has those issues, it doesn't gotten go any positive, negative, in between response from the OCD <coughs> compulsive community. I mean, people that you know, writing <coughs> saying boy, you've made me feel like there are others out there and it's okay and you can still lead a good, successful, productive life. Uh... There's one guy who's written 500 <laughs> letters. That's, that's, that's an Andy Breckman joke. That's not even an original joke. Uh, I don't know what your... I think it's been really positive. I, I mean, I think the, the goal, which has always been the goal from, from the beginning, is that if you know, is one, create awareness of mental health issues, and two, you know, I've always felt that if, if, if Monk can get out of the way of himself to be a hero at the end of every show, then any human being who has, you know, uh, mental health issues, uh, OCD, whatever it is, bipolar, you know, should, you know, feel that there's hope that they can get through their day, get out of their way, and do something that they want to accomplish. Because in a lot of ways, boy, that's a very sensitive line you're treading with this that could have really blown up in your face, potentially, if you hadn't handled it right. Um, I, it seems like, though, you, that you poke fun at it more, or at least equally on, in the merchandise, which I, I went online and, and saw. Anybody seen the Monk Phobia uh, coffee cup available? Uh, every, there were like 25 people nodding yes. Um, and they're like, yes, that's my cup. What? What of it? Um, uh, let's see, Monk's Phobias, which no doubt you're intimately familiar. Germs, needles, snakes, milk, heights, crowds, death, lightning, elevators, mushrooms, disorder, dark, and closed spaces, dirt, spiders, driving, bullies, fire, puppets, puppets, tap water, noises, touching, feet, flying, beautiful women, imperfection, dogs, cats, rabbits, monkeys, bridges, public speaking, flies, slime, birds, rivers, tunnels, and caves. And Is that all on the cup? That's, on the that's cup. all on the cup. <laughs> the, and the cup's only so big, man. <laughs> and, but I, I, we have to add, certainly bullets would be another uh, of your phobias, <laughs> based on the, the last episode that we saw. But <laughs> mushrooms. I didn't know there was a mushroom phobia out there. I guess you learn, you learn something from a coffee cup every day. <laughs> they uh, all have names, too. 
I mean, somebody sent me a list of like over 300 <coughs> phobias with actual names attached to them. And how, how many of those did you, do you personally have, David? <laughs> I have a few. <laughs> is, 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 this, is it an ongoing daily thing for you, seriously? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I mean, mostly, I, I mean, the ones that affect me on a daily basis are elevators and stairwells. This is true. <laughs> but, that, but it doesn't have a negative, I mean, a, like a huge impact in your life because you're able to avoid them. I've got a show that's going its seventh year. You seem to be doing all right. <laughs> so it's done very well for me. <laughs> <laughs> so you say you, it's elevators and stairwells, you say? On a daily basis, yeah. So if you have to get up to another floor, trampolines? <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I will go in stairwells, but I'll need to make sure. I'll usually put something in the, in the door to make sure it stays open because it's, you don't want to know. <laughs> we were at one of these parties a few years ago, and the elevator doors opened. A bunch of people got on, and David was there, and he was trying to get on the elevator. Gwen Stefani was in the elevator, and there was lots of room, and she was just lovely, smelled great. And he was standing there, and he would not step on the elevator. <laughs> I watched the doors close on David. And that's when I knew this was no, this was, yeah. this was very no. real. I, just, I really appreciate this show. It's been very valuable for me in my work with people I work with. And I really appreciate the role of the, the therapy in the show. And um, what have your thoughts been about how to use therapy in a way that isn't gimmicky and that doesn't take away from the specialness of the character? I don't know if I'm asking the question clearly, but... It, it it feels to me like a real therapy, which means it's complicated. And the character and so how do you see the character's evolution through the show so that therapy actually makes a difference without without dissolving what makes him unique? <clears throat> that's a that's a great question. And I think the uh, Jack can vouch for this too. The writers um in, they sort of use those therapy sessions as <clears throat> opportunities to, you know, delve into Monk's <coughs> past and his family early life. And, um, you know, we, we do a lot of um, funny, silly stuff on the show, uh, but the therapy sessions are a chance to really ground it again. And every time we feel like we're, I think the writers feel like it's starting to drift off into, you know, goofy land. <laughs> We, we we get a we get a really nice uh, well it used to be Kroger scene now it's Dr Bell um, and you know they're handled like real therapy sessions they're, they're we try not to play it the the, the, the jokiness of it and um, <clears throat> although there are often very funny things in those scenes they they tend to be really organic but um, it, it it is you're exactly right it is a way for the writers to tell this ongoing evolution of Monk's, well, for lack of a better word, his cure or his, you know, his the curve of getting better. <coughs> but, but again, we don't want him to get too much better. <laughs> you know, people, ask, people always ask me, you know, is the character going to ever, you know, not have these symptoms? I, I, I say, I hope not, because we won't have a, a show. It'll just be a cop show with, you know, <laughs> mysteries and stuff. Um, is this a condition that, that one overcomes typically? I don't know. David? <laughs> <laughs> so back to you. I, I mean, um, oh, God, it's such a complicated question. Um, I don't think so. I think one learns how to tolerate it. One tries to learn where it, where it comes from and how it began, uh, which I think deals with separation from mother um but you know i think you learned i mean i had it horribly as a child but you know so i've certainly grown through it and but there are still vestiges of 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 things i don't think you ever get rid of it